Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. We got a little bit of a storm brewing here in old New England, but that's all right, we're, we're used to that. So we're gonna cover stream provider uh, in this video. The last video we covered change notifier provider and if you miss that, you're just here for streams, that's fine. I'm going to put a GitHub repo down below. You can click that and get up to speed. But basically, we're doing this through an app just so it has some, some real-world relevance. And it's a, it's a Nordic ski app, so you can go into this app and see what everybody else is using for waxes at the Nordic ski area. You can set whether you're using imperial or metric uh, standard units and which brands of wax you want to see. So kind of a, a useless app, except for us, helps us in this situation. And we use change notifier provider for the settings and now we're going to use stream provider for the reports coming in uh, in the app. Firebase is going to be used, so we'll, we'll devote a little bit of this video to setting that up. I only used Stream Provider in here. As I was doing it, uh, I could see possibilities for working in blocks, integrating the different providers, but I didn't want to make it too complex. So uh, there's definitely some future video material here and how to use Stream Provider in a, I think, an even more efficient way. But this video is going to focus just on the Stream Provider. Uh, I'm going to get in off the lake. We'll go in warm up, have a cup of coffee, and we'll get started. All right, so if you did the change notifier provider video or you got the GitHub repo, this is our starter app. Not a whole lot going on here in the main page. Uh, there is a settings page, which you can get to by clicking this uh, gear. And in here, we could set the units from Imperial uh, to Metric. We can also select the wax lines, which are the brands that, uh, that make wax, Swix, Toco. And the idea is we'll have a streaming list of reports coming in from the ski area uh, on the main page, and that will be filtered by the values of our settings. So we'll, we'll only see Swix or Toco if we want to see one or the other. Uh, you can select neither if you don't understand the point of the app, or you can get both. Uh, and then we'll have a temperature reading on the main page, and we will convert that to imperial units or metric units, depending on what the user has selected. All right, so that's the objective. We uh, are going to need a Firebase project. So if we go to firebase.google.com, if you don't have an account, you'll need to sign up. And if you do, you will be given the option of adding a project now, I do have uh, a project set up here for the source code, so I'm going to add another one, uh, and I'm just going to call it Wax. No, I'm not, because I need at least four characters. All right, so we'll call it Wax 2. But you can call it whatever you want. I don't, I don't need Google Analytics, so we're going to disable that part, and we'll just go ahead and create the project. I will pause. You don't have to watch this uh, create a Firebase project for me. All right, so it is finished. I'll click continue. And what we need here is we need a database. And we're going to create a Firestore database. So we'll create database. Uh, I'm going to start it in test mode. That way we don't have to mess with permissions. Everything will be open. You can select your region if you don't like it and click done. And that's going to need some time too, so I'll pause it again. All right, there we go. We have a blank Firestore database, exactly what we want. And so now let's go ahead and set up an Android project. Um, so we come to Project Overview, and we want to add an app so we can click on Android. I'm just going to add Android for the purposes of this video if you want to add uh, iOS, you can do that as well. All right, we need a package name, and we can get that from our code. So if we go to uh, Android, we expand Android, we go into app, we go into the build.gradle that's in there. Uh, about halfway down, we will come to application ID, and that's what we want. So I'll copy that, I'll paste that in there. And then we can give it uh, a nickname. I'm just going to call it Wax App Android. 
And I'm not going to add a signing certificate because we're not going to use any of these features uh, yet. So we'll go ahead and click register app. All right, that will give us a Google Services JSON, which we can download. And I had one already in my download folder, so I'm going to have to rename it. It should not have this one affixed to it. There we go. And so I'm going to drag that, and I'm going to put that right in this app folder. And so it should sit right below build.gradle right there. And so we got that step. So we click Next. And so we want to do a little bit of adjustment to our build.gradle files. Let me get this situated so we can see both. All right, so first of all, on the project level, build.gradle. So that one is out here, right here, outside of this app folder, this one. And we want to check and see that we've got Google in the repositories, which we do. We want to make sure we have a class path in dependencies for com.google.gms, Google services, which we do not. So let's copy that. And right after the Kotlin plugin, I'm going to paste that in. And then we lastly, we want to check in the all projects that in our repositories we have Google, which we do. So we're all set with that one. Uh, now we want to go to the app level build, which is the one in the app folder, which we just had open to check the app ID. Uh, we want to apply this plugin right here this GMS Google services and we want to add it right after the com Android application right there I am also going to change the minimum SDK to 21 Uh, there are uh, there are different instructions out there for adding Firebase to your project. If you go to uh, Firebase, there's uh, different instructions than they actually lead you through here for adding Flutter. Uh, I wish they would get that more consistent, but uh, one of them does include bumping that minimum SDK version up to 21. It's not here, but I've had luck with it, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. All right, we'll click next and we are done there. So now we can go to, I'm gonna stop the emulator because we do need to add the package. Uh, we need to get the Cloud Firestore package from pub.dev. So we can go to pub.dev, we can search Firestore. We should get this cloud underscore Firestore. That's the official package. And we can go to installing and we can grab this and we can put that our pubspec.yaml. All right, a little bit of setup there, not too bad, but now we're ready to start our emulator again and hopefully enjoy the power of Cloud Firestore. So that has been imported. I'm going to click on main. I am going to start debugging. I am going to pause so you don't have to watch that fire up. All right, there it goes. And, you know, a lot of you have been telling me you've been getting a lot of red print and warnings when you run. Uh, Firebase lately and I'm getting the same thing with the latest version I'm getting less red red print about depreciated APIs uh, but it's it's still there it's funny the Google plugins like Google Maps uh, Firebase uh, are some of the worst at throwing errors like that uh, and it only happens on Android 
uh, iOS and tends to run fine. So all these Google products are not not working together, which is uh, I don't know, surprising or not surprising. If you ever work for a big company, uh, maybe not so surprising. But it does seem to work, and I did just uh, go to production with an app, and I hesitated to to put it into into the Google Play Store with all this these uh, warnings. But it seems to be working out just just fine. All right, so we want to create a stream here of reports coming in from around the ski area, and so let's create a report object. And so if we go into the lib folder. And we create a folder called models, which looks like I already did, but you can right click, create a folder. Uh, and in that models, we want to create a new file, which will be report.dart. And that's where we will model our custom object. We will call it class report. And so I, I want uh, four properties here. I want a temperature, which I'm going to store as an integer in Celsius and if the user has selected Fahrenheit, we'll handle that conversion on the way to the user interface. Uh, I want a string for the wax that's being used, whether it's red wax, green wax, blue wax, whatever. Uh, I want a string for the line of waxes, so the company that makes uh, the wax that's being reported. And then I want a timestamp uh, so I know when that report came in, so I can display that on the screen, and also so I can so sort them by newest to oldest. So we'll have a final integer, which will be our temp. We'll have a final string, which will be wax. We'll have a final string, which will be our line. And we'll have a final string, which will be our timestamp. And I find that easiest to do with Firestore is just to have the object be, or the property be a string in my Dart object and store it as a string in Firestore. And if I use the ISO format, it's very easy to convert in and out of uh, date time. All right, so those are our properties. We need a constructor. Let's do report. Uh, we'll do a name constructor. So we'll throw, we'll do parentheses, and then we'll do a, a couple curly braces. And I'm just going to take them as they are suggested to me. This dot temp. This dot line doesn't matter the order. Just taking whatever's thrown down for me. And then lastly, we're going to get out of Firestore. We're going to get a map. And so we want a custom constructor that we can call that will take the map that Firestore gives us and convert that into our Dart object. So we will have report dot uh, to JSON, we'll call it. And we will take that map that Firestore gives us. It will have a string key and we'll have dynamic values because we're going to have uh, integers and strings. So we've got a mix. And we'll call that parsed JSON. And so we want a, to map our temp to our parsed JSON uh, temp, comma. Wax is going to equal our parsed JSON wax. Timestamp. Timestamp will equal our parse JSON timestamp. These are all exactly the same because these are the fields uh, in the in the database. They don't have to be. This is your opportunity to map a field in a database to your property, but ours just happen to match because we designed it that way. And then we'll do line, and then at the end we'll follow that up with a semicolon. Okay, so now that we have a report, we want a service to be able to reach out to Firestore and get those objects from the database. So we can create a services folder under lib. Um, I already have one, so we will add uh, in there, we'll add Firestore underscore service dot dart. And so that's a class that we'll call Firestore Service. Makes sense. And so we want an instance of Firestore so we can do Firestore, bring that in, import it, and we'll call it underscore DB. 
and we'll set that equal to firestore.instance. All right, so we want a function to get our reports out of the Firestore database. So that will give us a string of type list of reports. Make sure we get the double closure there. And let's call it get reports. Uh, I'm going to need to import our model, our report model. So we'll let auto import do that. There we go. All right, so it's pretty easy because we're just getting a collection. So we can do return underscore db dot collection, and we can tell it that we're going to look for reports, which is where we'll store those reports. And so that returns a collection. Um, actually, it's going to return a stream of, can't get the right thing here. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Jumping ahead. So that's a collection. Um, and then if you did, you can either get a stream out of it or a future. So if you do get documents, you can get a future, which will be a query snapshot. Uh, we don't want to do that. We want to get a stream. So let's do snapshots. And so that's going to get us a query snapshot stream. And we're not, that's not what we want. We want a stream of list reports. So we're going to do a little bit more. I'm going to take out snapshot for now. I'm going to go to the next line. And let's do more than, than we just did there, than just grab the whole collection. Uh, let's start by adding an order by. And let's order by timestamp. And let's take the, we want the, the newest report on top. So we want to do descending is true. And now we can grab our snapshots. And so this still gets us a query stream, and that's not what we want. So we can use the map operator to take that snapshot, that query snapshot we get. And we're going to want to put that in parentheses. And right after the closing parentheses for snapshot, we want an arrow function. And we're going to map that to a snapshot item. And that snapshot item is going to have documents in it, so we want to get that. And then we want to take each one of those documents that comes out and we want to map it to our report objects. So let's do another dot map. And put the in parentheses as well. That's our document object. And we want to send that to, so now we can use our report to JSON. I actually want to call that from JSON. That's what, uh, let me go back to the, let's go back to the model. Go to report.dart. I mean, it doesn't matter as long as we're calling the right thing, but let's, let's do from JSON. All right, then come back to our service here and we'll do from JSON. Here we go. And so we can pass in, we've map, mapped this uh, document snapshot now, so we can do document, but not just document, document.data property. And now we have, uh, this is mapped to a iterable of reports, so we're close. So we just need to come inside here and cast to list. Put a semicolon. I'm going to format that. I'm going to slide these out here where I think they should be. And there we go. So we get our collection. We order it by the timestamp des descending. We go ahead and get that snapshot. Map that snapshot. Take the documents in the snapshot. Map those. Take our report model and our custom constructor, which takes a map from Firestore and maps it to our uh, report object in Dart. And then we cast that all back to a list. Excellent. So that, that gets us our report stream. Uh, it would also be nice to have a way to add to the report stream. Um, the way our app is set up, basically we're re receiving other people's 
reports and of course there isn't anybody to actually have those reports uh, sent up from so what I'd like to do is I'd like to have a fab button down here and when you click it it'll create a random report which will appear on the screen which will simulate reports coming in from around the ski area okay and so to do that we're gonna create a future that's a they get you get one key off on a keyboard and it's just total nonsense all right void and we'll call it add report okay so we can add a map to Firestore so let's create a variable called data map and we will create a new map with string keys and dynamic values do our parentheses and then we can do return db dot collection and the collection we want to add to is reports we can add and we can add our data map alright so that will add that to the collection it's just a blank data map so that's obviously not what we want we want to add some values to it and so to randomize the reports, uh, I'm going to use the random class from Dart Math. So if we come up top here and we do a var random and we set that equal, random, equal to a new instance of the random class, and we import the random class from Dart Math. then we can come down here and create a variable that is a temperature value and we can do uh, a random value for our temperature now the random class has a random number that they will give you and you can pass it a maximum value you can't pass it a minimum value so you can't range with the random package which is unfortunate so let's create our own down here and let's create an in integer and we'll create a function called next that will do just that so we'll create an integer which is a minimum and an integer which is a maximum and to get that range effect what we'll do is we'll take the minimum and we'll add a random integer so random dot next integers this is a, a native function from the random package is next integer but it takes the maximum value so we will do max minus oops max minus min and so by taking the minimum value and taking the difference between the max and min and taking that as the maximum and adding the two together you create a function that will allow you to range and we've called it next so let's do our call our next function and for our minimum, let's do negative 15 and a maximum of 5. Seems like a reasonable range for a ski area in Celsius. So that'll be our temperature, our line, which is our, our company. Um, let's So we're going to have anywhere between negative 15 and 5. So let's split that in half. And let's say if temp is less than negative 5, then we'll use a ternary expression here. and let's call that a Swix and if not we'll call it a Toko a colon there and then for our wax um, there are more than two kinds of, of wax but we're just gonna bounce between two just for our purposes here to get a different random going on let's just say if our temp is even we'll call it red and if it's not we'll call it green okay so and down below in our data map once we have our data map we can start adding properties to it so let's say the data map dot line is equal to our line variable and then our data map wax is equal to our wax variable and the data map temp is equal to our temp variable 
And then the last property we need is timestamp. And that is going to be equal to date time dot now dot to ISO 8601 string thing. So that is a format that is readily parsed in and out of date time in Dart. Stores well as a string in Firestore. Win win. Okay, so we've got our Firestore service. We can get our reports. We can add a random report. Uh, this stream is going to be what we want to feed to our main page right here. And this is where Stream Provider finally comes into play. So we can come out to our main.dart. And we can bring that stream into our widget tree uh, right up here by wrapping it with a provider. Now we could do another wrap on top of change notifier provider with a stream provider. Uh, or more elegantly, we have a solution in provider called multi provider. And multi provider allows us to pass an array of providers into the widget tree. And that's exactly what we want to do here. So we have a property called providers in multi provider. We can create a brackets. And in those brackets can go any providers with a comma separation that we want to use in our application. So we want to we want to keep our change notifier provider. And so we can just create I can just cut this. This is the remnants of the one I obliterated and we have our change notifier back in our application. And then we can do a comma, and this is where we can bring in a stream provider. And we use a create method just like we did for change notifier provider. And in this, we can provide the stream that can be accessed anywhere in the application. And so the stream that we would like to feed to this is going to come right out of Firestore. So let's bring in Firestore into our uh, widget here by doing uh, final Firestore service underscore DB is what I'll call it. And we'll just bring in an instance of that Firestore service. And the stream that we want to be able to access in the widget tree is going to be DB dot get reports. And in front of that, I need to just the same syntax here. I need to do a build context context. You can actually just put context if you want to to shorthand that. OK, so that stream is now available in our widget tree for any widget below the main.dart file, which in our case is just about everything. And so if we come up here to home and we want those reports, then we can do that by bringing in the provider. So in our build, if we want to grab that stream, we can create a, a reports object or a list by doing provider dot of we have to import provider. Do our semicolon at the end and then come back here to after the of and specify what you are trying to bring in and that is a list of reports. And so now this will go up the widget tree and look for a list of reports that it can bring into this widget which is going to be from main and it's going to be this db.getreports from our Firestore service. All right, we need to import report. Yeah, gonna have to do that manually. Auto import has been a little sketchy lately. So we'll do models, we'll do report.dart. There we go. So if we wanna stream those reports, we can come down here after our app bar, we can create a body. In the body, we can do a list view dot builder, and I'm gonna I'm gonna start with item count, and that is going to be equal to reports dot 
length and then item builder is going to be context index curly braces and so each each item that comes through I want to build a list tile and I'm going to have a leading so we'll make that a text widget that has um, actually why don't I come up here and let's do a report let's just create a report item which will be reports with index and that'll just save us a little bit of a typing here so we can do report dot temp so that's where we we'll put the temperature and that needs to be cast to a string all right then we want to see a title and so we'll make that a text widget and let's make the title let's make that our wax so we'll do report dot wax uh, let's do a subtitle and we'll do the brand or line underneath that and then for a trailing we can do a timestamp so let's do a text widget um, let's format that timestamp so if we go to pub.dev and we go to date format there is a great package there called date underscore format you can go to installing and this one you can install on the fly you do not need to stop and restart the emulator so we can just go to pubspec.yaml we can paste it below cloudfire store we can save it and as soon as it's done coming down we can access it here and that's done with date format still getting it ready do I have that backwards yeah format date sorry about that okay and then so we got report so we have uh, our, our timestamp is actually a string but so we can do time date time dot parse and pass it report dot timestamp then we're in business and then for our formats what you do is you do brackets and you can do hours uh, I'm gonna do lowercase h and you comma separate uh, all the elements of this date format and it smushes them all together so then I want a string that is the colon and then I want nn which is our minutes and then I want a space and then I want AM PM which I can do there so the the lowercase h is a single character if you know it doesn't do the leading zero uh, in 12 hour time if I wanted to have the leading zero I could do two H's if I want 24 hour time without a leading zero I could do that and if I want the leading zero I do that so pick your format And we need to return that list tile. There we go. Okay. And so in doing this video, I learned something about Firestore in that because I have the same package name for my source code and uh, my actual production code, uh, it's basically thinks it's the same app and because Firestore will tr try to intelligently store records on your device, um, if it can, if it's, if it's uh, offline, it's basically thinking that the records I added when I did my source code are still valid for this. So you do not have records on your screen. I do. It's okay. We'll get around it. We'll get through this together. So don't worry about that. But you can see we have our format. Uh, we have, you know, we have a list of records here. At least I do because I've got some data. You don't. So let's give you an ability to add so after our body let's add a fab button and when you click it we're going to call firestore and we're going to add a random record so if we come down after list view 
and we do a floating action button floating action button uh, we need a child the child will be an icon and we'll do icons dot add and then after that we'll add an on pressed so we'll do parentheses curly braces hit enter and down here we want to call our firestore add and so let's come up to the top and let's create a firestore service we'll call it db and we'll set that equal to a new instance of firestore service and then we will call underscore db add report in our floating action button and so when we click that we're going to call add report uh, it should bounce back to our stream which should be reading that from the newest to the oldest and the new record should be inserted on the top and there we go so we see green uh, at negative nine degrees Celsius and if we hit plus we get a new record and the green negative nine has slid down we have done all of this without a stream builder so that is the major advantage of stream provider is that all of the code that goes along with stream provider can go away and you can simply have right like we have here just a list view it is succinct it is elegant it works great now you may have noticed that this is not exactly performing the way we, we want it to because we have a settings page and we want to be able to filter this so if I say I don't want to see Swix or Toco uh, I just want to see a blank screen I don't get that and that's because we've just brought in the stream from Firestore and we can just go ahead and and uh, filter right on top of that stream so let's do that so we have values in our uh, change notifier provider that we could use to filter the stream as it's brought out of the provider and so we can do that by just bringing in our serve our settings provider settings and so this is what we built in change notifier provider it's sitting over here in the provider folder and we are setting our settings we are getting our settings and we're putting them into the um, onto the device with shared preferences and now we're tapping into that to filter our stream and so we do provider dot of and what we want to get is our settings provider And so that's this class here in provider that is storing this data. And so coming back to home.dart, if we now have these settings, what we can do is rather than bring in the full stream here, where we have var reports, we can come right on top of it and add a where clause and so we're going to get a report object out of that and what we want is we only want brands that are in the list of strings that we have provided here in our settings widget so in our settings provider we are maintaining through these filter chips a list of wax lines that we want to see and we can now use that to say if settings dot wax lines contains report dot line then we want to see it and lastly we just want to cast that back to a list because that's going to be an iterable Let's save that. I'm going to auto format, which will wrap it a little bit like this. And so now the stream that we have is filtered by our settings provider, which is a change notifier provider. And you can see we have nothing. And that's because we haven't selected a line. And if we say we only want to see Swix, we only get Swix. If we say we only want to see Toco, that's all we get. 
So that is the magic of Stream Provider. This is all lazily loaded, so you don't have to worry about the fact that in our Firestore service, we're just getting all the reports. We are only seeing on the screen what we need to see, and if we scroll down, that is being loaded as we call it. We had to do virtually nothing in our user interface to bring in that stream. We did it just all up here and then our list view can remain clean. Let's take care of one more thing that we want to do here. That We've got a Celsius display over here. If we go back into our settings and we display Imperial, or we are actually selecting Imperial, we don't get it yet. So let's come over here to our leading and let's do this. If settings.units equals metric, then I'm just going to put that on another line. We'll take that. Otherwise, we want a text with our report dot temp. String like that. And let's uh, add a conversion here. And so we're going to do some math here. <laughs> Yikes. All right. So let's do four parent. Well, Let's do this. So we need to take our temp. Let's get these to string out here. Uh, let's wrap our report in parentheses and multiply it by parentheses 9 divided by 5. And then we want to wrap that whole thing. So wrap here, another parentheses here. And so two parentheses out there, right there, we want to add 32. And then we want to round that. So we need to actually wrap all of that in another parentheses. So another one there around the 32 and another one in front of report. So you should have four now in front of report. Let's see, one after temp, two after the nine divided by five and two after the 32 so come in between these two we'll do dot round why are we rounding when it's an integer well after we do this math it will not be and then we can cast that to string and by golly we've got it so one last thing i want to do after the to string let's add the unicode for the degree sign so backslash u zero zero b zero you didn't know this was going to become a math lesson did you probably wouldn't have clicked on this video if you knew that then let's come up let's copy that we'll do the same thing for metric after the two string we'll just add the degree symbol okay now I'm happy so that is stream provider really great way to cut down on the amount of code that you have here in your user interface you do not have to use a stream builder which is great uh, we did do a little filtering up here if you were to work in a block, you could you could factor that out and not have to deal with that. Uh, I thought that was a little beyond the scope of this. We just wanted to cover Stream Provider today, but it definitely gives me some ideas for future videos. So thanks for watching. Hope you found this helpful. My plan next time, my rough plan next time is to cover Future Provider. And I think what I'd like to do is implement a Google sign-in directly through Google, which will get you a future back with the authentication data. Uh, and then we'll, we'll plug in Future Provider to receive that uh, as elegantly as we can in our user interface. So that's the plan for next time. Thank you for watching today. Please like and subscribe if you found this helpful. And we'll see you in the next video.